Good afternoon. Uh, yes, in about 15 minutes, we are going to see and talk about Witch Doctor, uh, the music video I made in collaboration with Studio Smack and the Start. But before we are going there, I would like to use this stage to give an overview of some of the works I've made in the past 10 years. Um, and I would like to start with uh, a short video I made in 2005. It was the first video I made. It's a fictional nature documentary about the non-existing insect species. And these electronical insects live in the rural area in Germany. And by the merging of nature with technology, this completely new sort of insects evolved, and they are called the Order Electris. In the year after the Order Electris, I created uh, another documentary called Metalosis Maligna. It's a fictional documentary, again, about a non-existing disease which happens to people with a metal implant in their body, like a knee replacement or a hip replacement. And as soon as these people, these patients, are infected by Metalosis Maligna, metal starts growing throughout the body from the metal implant. Um, in 2012, I created my first fictional online story uh, called Human Bird Wings. It was a project which took place during a period of eight months, and it showed the building process of Jarno Smeets, who built, builds himself his own wings to fly, away, uh, to fly with in the same way as birds do. And this video reached the world press. Uh, almost every news broadcaster showed it as the first flying human in the history. With, uh, with flapping wings. After, or at the same time as the Human Bird Wings project, I collaborated with Next Nature and Studio Smack and worked on the Rayfish Footwear project, also an online storytelling uh, project about a fictional company based in Thailand, which claimed to be able to produce genetically engineered stingray sneakers, sneakers made out of engineered, uh, genet genetically engineered stingray. And on the website, people were able to uh, combine all sorts of patterns from nature and create their own unique design. And this design was then grown on the, on the skin of a stingray. More recently, last year, I did a commissioned work for the Moti Museum of the Image in Breda. Um, I created, I reconstructed one of the, the panels of the, one of the most famous paintings of Euronymous Boss, the Garden of Earthly Delights. And I reconstructed the right panel as a game simulation. This is an endless going torture of people being tortured in this game simulation uh, driven by an algorithm. And this world is completely built up out of open source or crowdsourced photo scans which people can make with their smartphone. Uh, I, I would like to go a bit more into detail on my latest project. It's called The Modular Body and I released it a few months ago. Uh, the Modular Body is an online a science fiction project. And when I started doing research, I wanted to tell a story about creating life in the lab uh, by using biotechnology. And I discovered a lot of articles like these uh, on popular science websites and technology websites which state that it's already possible to print human organs with uh, 3D bioprinting bio techniques. There's even a TED talk by Anthony Attala who shows that well, who prints a kidney live on stage, but if you start to dig a bit further in these kind of stories, you discover that it's not that far yet. This is some sort of science fiction journalism. It takes about 30 or 40 years, I guess, to make really functional organs uh, uh, with a printer. But for me, this, well, well let's say that the science fiction journalism triggered a fascination or an Im imagination, and I wanted to to create my own story about this uh, technological development. And I decided to make The Modular Body. It's a, s a science fiction story about a team of scientists who create a new type of body uh, existing out of organ modules. And this body is called Oscar. And Oscar has various uh, organ modules. There's a heart, a brain. The brain can stimulate the blood circulation. Then there's a lung module who can oxygenate the blood and, well, uh, give it oxygen, and then there's uh, several kinds of other kidney modules and liver modules. Uh, there's various arm and leg modules. And this would be, the story focuses on a, a prototype, the size of a hand. And what I like about this is that, well, maybe if it's once possible to create or to print organs, would we also be able to print a complete human? And if we can print a complete human, wouldn't we use that opportunity 
to make it better or to make it more immortal. And that's what the modular body is about. And it's also about the body as a completely different shape. Um, a modular body wouldn't look like we, we have our bodies right now. It's completely changing all the time. You can plug in an arm or a leg or a heart every time you, uh, you need one or you, you want one. And the story is built up out of, out of uh, 56 fragments. And I'm, going to, I'm not going to show them all, of course. I, I made a selection of a few. And these 56 fragments, they show the birth of Oscar, this modular creature. Uh, this is uh, some sort of fake Kickstarter video I made. The human body is a biological device, an outdated device. If diseased, there's usually one organ spreading the problem. The rest is working fine, but gets needlessly affected. Every day, millions of people suffer from dysfunction in body parts because they get infected or decayed, simply because the human body is a closed system, not evolved to last. Already, quite some institutes are printing organs with human cells. They all focus on creating identical copies to use as spare parts. We want to use this opportunity not to maintain, but to redefine mankind. So this is a new kind of body, an open system printed with human cells in our own independent lab, a pocket-sized living prototype made with detachable modules. They're all connected to the brain. Bloodstream and nerve signals are transferred throughout the connectors, and simple junctions keep everything linked. If an organ gets ill, you can easily replace it with a new one. Or for example, if your body needs an extra arm, you can just upgrade the body with an extra limb module. Another great thing about this is, the modular body will become alterable and adaptable to all kinds of situations. We call it Oscar. Thank you. It is, this is just one of those fragments. Uh, I have another one which I want to share, but next to these kind of fragments are also a lot of videos of the building process of Oscar. You can see how the heart is being printed, how the limb module is being created out of all sorts of uh, various types of tissue. And there's also a video in which you can see an, an X-ray scan of Oscar and uh, the way how its heart beats. Recording. Good. Back a little bit. Just that. Good. Perfect. Good. Okay, video off. Recording. Chuck splitting. Video off. Recording. Thin liquid. Good. And next to this video, there's also a video of Oscar in its sterile environment in an earlier stage, still attached to an external blood supply and a data cable. Yeah, when we uh, released the project uh, in April, there was one video which almost immediately went viral. At this moment, it's being watched about 13 million times, and it made people uh, yeah, get more interested for the modular body as a project, and that's this one. We're looking at Oscar, the first human modular prototype that is able to live in various setups. What's going to happen is that I'm going to connect the brain to the heart module to activate the blood circulation. Now, the lung is going to start breathing. You 
can see both organs are now collaborating. I can add a kidney module. And if I add a limb module, it starts actuating the organism to move. Now it's looking for the optimum temperature, which is 37 degrees. If I add another limb, Oscar will recognize it and beneficiate from new possibilities. So this video attracted a lot of attention. Uh, in a few days, the Facebook page was liked for 83,000 times and the website was, was being visited for over 500,000 times. And all these videos come together on a website I created together with design company Lust Lab. Um, I'm going to give a short introduction to the website. This is what the website looks like. It, for me, it's some sort of way to share the story in a non-linear way. Uh, people can click on a video, and as soon as they do it, suggestions by the algorithm, which has something to do with that one video, pop up. And you can well, click in a, on a logical video, which is more in a, yeah, in a logical order with the previous video you've watched. And while you're doing that, all the videos become part of a story path. And in that way, as a user, you can, or as a, as a, yeah, as an, someone from the audience, you can create your own story path. There's no real storyline in it, but as a user, you create your story yourself. And if you're satisfied, you satisfied with your story path, you can give an overview. And there's also a full page view for a more cinematic experience. Um, that's what it shows now. It's just a full screen, and if you move your move your cursor, you can click on whatever fragment you want, and in that way, navigate to through the birth of Oscar. So that was my 15 minutes uh, <laughs> about my own uh, uh, work, my own projects. And now I would like to switch over to a project which I made in collaboration with Studio Smack. Uh, it's a design company from Breda and with Torre Florim. And I think it's a good idea to first watch the video. It's a music video for which doctor by the start. Oh, little sicky seems to be the pain. Got all these herbs, don't mean a fucking thing. I'm the little witch with the magic tricks. Mistrust the White House, come and get your fix. It's not about the numbers, what you feel is real. Crystals raise the light, the taste of orange peel. Open the mind, change the mind, it's how we achieve. Can't hurt to try, right? It's what I believe. Witch doctor, a witch doctor, a witch doctor, a witch doctor.
Thank you very much. And you're not alone. You brought uh, someone with you, the lead singer of the Staat, Toto Florin. Come with you. <laughs> Wonderful to have you here, both. Um, first, something about the video. Do you know something about how, how many views did it already have? Uh, Tora just told me 2.8 million. On or uh, I think combined with uh, Vimeo, it's about three now, I guess. Yeah. Maybe uh, with the, f I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And it, and, and it, it hardly uh, wasn't released, I thought. Yeah, uh, the, the video took so long to make uh, that was almost like because um, this is actually a song almost three years old now. Uh, it was uh, of our last album. Um, we kind of, uh, we wanted it to be released, I think, a year before it was done. <laughs> <laughs> Probably nine months or so. Uh, so um, it took uh, uh, way too long and uh, we were almost uh, about to release our new album. So it's, it's for, me, uh, for uh, pop music, it's not really normal to release an old song. Uh, video when you release a new album, which yes. uh, and the, the old song is not on the new album, so <laughs> it didn't make a lot of sense. But actually, it was quite good timing after all because we released the video I think two weeks before we uh, we announced the new album, and the video was uh, liked by a lot of people. So it was like we're gonna tour again, and then a lot of people started buying tickets for the tour. So <laughs> it was good. So, but but how did your collaboration begin? I think Studio Smock, uh, who, are, who aren't here right now, but they used, uh, they wanted to use one of our songs for the showreel. And, and they said, yeah, we want to pay for it. And I said, no, that's, don't pay for it. Just let's do something together, maybe one day. And later on, we, uh, we just uh, had a meeting and uh, we talked about, we had a couple of ideas and pretty soon Flores uh, was involved as well. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, so what, what, what kind of ideas did you did you have? Did you bring in? Did you have any wishes or f for floors? Well, I think it started with a lot of um, brainstorming. We immediately, with the song connects in a way with the Gabba culture, the hardcore culture, yeah. and um, Tora also brought a lot of videos. <laughs> yeah. uh, inspiration for the people for who videos. don't know the hardcore culture. Yeah, the right, right. <laughs> uh, the hardcore Gabbers. Yeah, the, the, Gabbers. Song, the song is very much influenced by. Uh, uh, hardcore music from the 90s, also known as Chabar. Um, it, I, it's, it's basically, we stole the whole uh, genre and made it into our rock. We used it, into our, uh, used it in our rock situation, so it became a new thing. So I thought it would be cool if we could use that, uh, the way the Chabars look, you know, the real Chabars are bold. Um, so it, it kind of started with the idea of, uh, and the song is it's called Witch Doctor, and it's a, kind of about the way some, it, it, it was kind of about uh, uh, alternative medicine and how some, some, the bad ones convince people to use their crystals or herbs to be cured of cancer or whatever. And I was kind of angry about some articles I read at the time, so I kind of sing from the perspective of the witch doctor. I think the, the brainstorm kind of started with that, like, wouldn't it be cool if I would be the witch doctor standing in front of a crowd of chabars, and at a certain point I would be able to control Manipulate, them, yeah. as, as it would seem, you know, they would be dancing, but at a certain point they would dance in formation or something. That, that's, that's, the, that's what it started with, but uh, yeah. then I find the, 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 Sufi, the, the, the Sufi circle uh, left yeah. there, uh, which is <laughs> it's kind of based mostly on that, I think. And also the, the monkey chant in uh, Indonesia. Yeah. Um, and and it, it's, it just became like a weird combination of those, thi those things, right? Yeah. It, and, yeah. And, uh, yeah. So Flores, yeah, what happens? So he had these elements and then... Yeah, then we, uh, yeah, we of course started to think of how we could make that uh, as a music video, an interest, interesting music video. And at first it was li more like a traditional video with a lot of different shots uh, of a big audience. Uh, but we soon ended up with the idea to make it very simple with one, just one camera movement mm -hmm. going back to the cr through the crowd. And it, well, it, it seems like a simple idea, but technically it was much more difficult to do it in that way because you don't have any sh cuts to, well, to, um, to make it easier for yourself. Yeah. 
and the editing. And yeah, that, yeah, that's why it, I think it also took so much time because the lighting, we, to we shot Torre in a studio, in yeah. my studio in The Hague. It was a very uh, low budget video. Yeah, you can see it here. Uh, I made my own dolly track and we just had a very cheap green screen. Uh, <laughs> and it was not a big space, so we weren't able to get the, per the most perfect light. But yeah, for, it was a very re relaxed shoot. There weren't many people. I was the camera guy. And, uh, but then after the shoot, we were very happy. And then we started to discover all sorts of flaws, like the black dots on the screen. We needed it for camera tracking. But every time Toro was lifting his hands, uh, it became a problem because, well, it's, it, that's a technical story. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, did you have any idea what they were creating around you? But because you probably are on your own in front of the yeah. green screen, and what you, what would be the end the end result? No, we we had a pretty clear idea of what we wanted to do. Um, also, the movements that I uh, did and stuff were pretty much thought out because at certain points I I do these kinds of things or this. Yeah. You know, and at certain points, the, the, you see the audience uh, fall down and stuff like that. Those were all moments that were thought out, because uh, because this whole this whole thing was, sh uh, I think it was shot before I did. Uh, yeah. um, so we had all these movements, and uh, then after that, I did uh, uh, my part. Yeah. Which which also was maybe that's funny to tell. It was kind of based on um, the way I look. Is kind of if you have seen the the movie, um, there will be blood. I was kind of going for the that uh, 19th uh, century American look, uh, <laughs> the priesty vibe, and also um, the way Leonardo DiCaprio speeches in the what's the movie called? Um, no, no, yeah, Wolf of Wall Street. The way Wolf of Wall Street, the way he speeches and stuff like that. Uh, we uh, we watched a lot of uh, clips for me to, you know, I had to be a be a very uh, like a demagogue guy, a populist, almost. But, I mean, I think it got a bit out of hand in the end. I mean, in yeah. the making of this video. I mean, we, I were, <laughs> we were overestimating ourselves, I think. <laughs> but in the end, yeah. did you surprise yourself with the, with the, with the result on the end? I mean, yeah, you, of course. Yeah, I, I, that's with almost everything I do. I, I only see technical flaws. Uh, but what is really nice is that it ended up so well that many people liked it. And also what's happening right now, we can maybe Tori can tell, yeah, tell yeah. something about it. But you mean on the festival, the, the crowd, what is happening? Yeah, the, the cool thing I think is about this video that it, it was kind of a, uh, when it was finished, uh, we were making this in a period when we didn't play live that much because we were making a new record. So the first um, show we did after that was at the uh, Eurosonic Festival. And I just... After we released this video and it went so well, I thought, what, what happens if I would perform this song in the crowd? You know, would they get it? Would they, what, what, what would they do, you know? So that's basically the first time that I tried it. And um, uh, this is... Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is in Amsterdam and here, this is in the Nijmegen. Uh, people understand, you know? I didn't, I didn't have to tell them anything. I just stood there and I, I created my space. and. Um, started to perform the song and uh, people knew what to do, you know? So, the, so cool, the cool thing about this, I guess, and it, it made me think about um, uh, being an, an artist and in a band in a different way because this is now more than just a video. You know, the song, we adapted the song for the video to make it, to make both of them more powerful, I guess, because at first the song was just beginning with the uh, drums and had a bigger intro, but we, because we started the video on my face, we decided let's make the song different and let it uh, be, uh, uh, let, let the song start with just my voice, you know? So we changed the song for the video, but now the, we are doing the video every time we play live now. <laughs> so it's, it's become something way more, uh, and it made me change the way uh, I think about what you can do as a, as a band. And, and maybe more, about the know. next video. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't plan to make a music video anymore. <laughs> <laughs> this was a once There's in no a life, a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> well, it, it's 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 great that you were here to uh, to uh, elaborate on the video. And uh, I was on a festival. I saw it with my own eyes. It's uh, amazing what is happening. 
uh, with the crowd. And um, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very thank much you. for being here. Lois Kijk, Thank you.